everybody and welcome to our service for the first Sunday of Christmas from St James and St Anne's Bermondsey. Our first carol reminds us that he came down to earth from heaven who is God and Lord of all. We sing together once in Royal David City come now to the confession. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. A few moments of quiet. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence and serve you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. 
The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having confessed our sins and received the assurance of God's forgiveness, let us sing God's praise together. And then after the next carol, our Bible reading and a message from God's Word. interested in family history. I don't know whether you've ever researched your family tree. It's something that my brother's got really into and he's looked back at some of our forebears and some of our ancestors. And one of the things that he's discovered is that we are descended from Dick Turpin, the highwayman. You never quite know 
who might be there in your past. You never know the full story of who your ancestors were, who you've descended from, who's there in the family history. Well, the Bible was very interested in family history. And when Matthew came to write his gospel about the Lord Jesus Christ, he started off by telling us the family history. It feels like just a list of names, but each name tells a story. Let me read you these opening verses from Matthew's Gospel. This is the list of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, a descendant of David who was a descendant of Abraham. From Abraham to King David, the following ancestors are listed. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah and his brothers, then Perez and Zerah, their mother was Tamar, Hezron, Ram, Abimadad, Narshon, Sa Salmon, Boaz, his mother was Rahab, Obed, his mother was Ruth, Jesus and King David. From David to the time when the people of Israel were taken into exile in, Ab in Babylon, the following ancestors are listed, David, Solomon, his mother was the woman who had been Uriah's wife, Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Uzziah, Jothan, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Ammon, Josiah, and Jehoiakim and his brothers. From the time after the exile in Babylon to the birth of Jesus, the following ancestors are listed. Jehoiakim, Shetiel, Zerubbabel, Abiab, Eliakim, Azor, Zadok, Achim, Eliad, Eliza, Mathan, Jacob, and Joseph, who married Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was also called the Messiah. So then, there were 14 generations from Abraham to David, and 14 from David to the exile in Babylon, and 14 from then to the birth of the Messiah. That's the family history of Jesus. There are some key names there, and we're just going to pick out a few of them. The first one is Abraham. Matthew wants us to know that Jesus has been descended from Abraham, that God's promise that first came to Abraham, that he was going to bring blessing to his people, is going to be worked out and completed and fulfilled in Jesus. Matthew wants us to know that Jesus is descended from Abraham because Jesus is completing all that God promised through Abraham. The next thing that Matthew wants us to know is that Jesus is descended from David. David was the greatest king the people of Israel had ever had until now, when an even greater king had come. Matthew wants us to know that Jesus is a king. He's the true king. He's the perfect king. He's the king in the line of David. He's from the royal family. Jesus has now completed all that God had intended through the kings of Israel. They were far from perfect, even David himself wasn't perfect. But Jesus, the true king, the real king, the perfect king has come. Matthew wants us to know that in the family history of Jesus is Abraham, the father of the nation, and David, the greatest king. The next thing Matthew wants us to know is that in Jesus' family history were the exiles. The people who were sent into exile, the people who were sent to a far country, the people who were thrown out of their own country because of their sin and rebellion, the people who longed for the day that they would return. Matthew wants us to know that Jesus is one with them, with those exiles, they're part of his family. But also that Jesus is the one that's really finally going to bring people out of exile. He's the one who's going to bring people fully into God's kingdom 
God's people will no longer be in exile if they follow him because the Messiah has come. The next thing that is clear from Matthew's family history is that Jesus comes from a line of sinners. He doesn't edit out some of the more unsavoury characters. We could leave Dick Turpin out of our family history, but actually it's part of the story. We are partly descended from that rogue, that highwayman, that man who was executed for his crimes. And Matthew doesn't edit out some of the people who are in Jesus' family history. So we hear that Jesus is descended, as well as from the good King David, from the very evil King Manasseh. We hear that in Jesus' family history there is Rahab, a prostitute. And there's a reference to Uriah's wife. A reference, of course, to David's sin and his adultery with Bathsheba. It's not covered up. It's part of the story. In Jesus' family history, there's Abraham, the father of the nation, there's David, the great king. There are the exiles longing to return home. There are the sinners who rebelled against God and need forgiveness. And then there are the Gentiles. Jesus was a Jew. He was king of the Jews. But in his family history, there were Gentiles too. We hear of Rahab, and we hear of Ruth, who was from Moab. In that amazing catalogue of names, in that family history of the Lord Jesus, Matthew is telling us that Jesus is the Saviour and the Lord for everyone. In his family history is Abraham, the father of the nation, David, the great king, the exiles, the sinners, the Gentiles. They're all there. They're all part of his family history. They're all part of his story. And he has now come into the world Born as a baby, dying on the cross, rising again for us, reigning at the right hand of the Father, to be the Saviour of everyone who will come to him and put their trust in him. Thank God for the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, who is the fulfilment of everything God had promised and everything had done, God had done in the Old Testament who is the one who comes to give us life and peace and forgiveness and a whole new relationship with God that we could never earn but is given to us as a gift. Thanks be to God for his amazing gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray to Jesus our Saviour. Christ, born among us, draw near to us with your love. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, for whom the angels sang, give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, before whom the wise men knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, Saviour, child of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayer. Glory to you forever. Amen. Spring. 
a final prayer of blessing. May the joy of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. May God bless you. May I wish you once more a very happy Christmas. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.